So hello Ajahn Vam and thank you very much for being here today. It's the 20th of March and um, you've kindly offered to answer a few questions about the coronavirus and, and maybe offer some thoughts about how we can support each other during this time. So um, my yeah. first question is uh, that during this time of uncertainty there's a lot of anxiety and fear about the future. Um, what are some of the tools that you'd recommend to help people who might be struggling with anxiety at this time? If, if anxiety would be of any help to you, it's wonderful, then be anxious. But you notice that most anxiety is counterproductive and it just makes you even more sick. Uh, there was that wonderful story of me going to this uh, cancer group over in Australia. And I've been going there for 27 years every year. And the reason I keep going there was because there was one woman, uh, when I first went there, the very first year, uh, she said uh, this question that she'd uh, gone through a very terrible uh, cancer. She was in remission, but she asked me what would happen if it came back again? And straight away my answer was, well, what would happen if it didn't come back? <laughs> and that really shook her. And you know, she never thought of that before. And of course, what happened was that cancer never came back. But she comes back every year to see me when I visit that place for the last 27 years. And it's one of those wonderful ways of what you're afraid of, the very fear which you have stops your health from being strong. And it means that your immune system cannot be strong. And you find whatever you're afraid of is more likely to happen simply because of the fear. Mm -hmm. So not to say you shouldn't take proper precautions, but fear by itself is usually counterproductive. So first of all, understand that fear just is usually counterproductive, it's not very helpful, and a lot of time fear is looking into the future with a negative mind. And the opposite of that fear is being hopey, mm -hmm. which is looking into the future with a positive mind. Now, have you ever thought what might happen if you didn't get coronavirus? If, a lot of people are not going to get coronavirus, you know. So why not think about the positive parts of this? And if you did, maybe you just get a very, very mild case, like most people get. So which means that, you know, that you've done nothing to worry about. In the meantime, enjoy your life right now and uh, have... Uh, a lot of kindness, a lot of joy, a lot of service, a lot of peace, and do things as you would normally do, eat well, rest well. One wonderful benefit of this is that more people are spending time by themselves. They're getting a bit of a break from the stress of life. So always look at the positive side of this. You can be by yourself, uh, in your home. You can work from home. Sometimes you don't even work at all. And the government pays you for just sitting at home doing nothing. Now you get some idea of what it's like to be a monk <laughs> or a nun. <laughs> Although actually we work very hard. But always look at the positive side of what you're facing. And don't look at the future with negativity. Look at it with a positive mind. And that's the best thing you can possibly do. Great. Okay. Um, many people are also facing separation from their loved ones. How do you think we could stay connected? Look. When you are with a loved one, you can only be with loved ones for a certain amount of time. That's why you can enjoy their company. If you're with your loved one 24-7 and you're always there right next to them, they'll drive you crazy, be honest. And just sometimes that, that separation is, gives us the understanding that it's a space where we can look back and understand what a relationship is all about. Relationships always will have time that when people separate and then we can enjoy each other when we come and see each other again. If you ever been to airports, you can see that people haven't seen each other for a couple of weeks or for months or for years and they just have these wonderful reunions which is wonderful to see. You wouldn't have those beautiful happy reunions if people were always there. And it's the same when somebody uh, passes away and you know they're not going to be around for you know, a lifetime or more. And then at least you look back upon the time you've had together, had a wonderful life. It is the old simile of the concert. 
If a concert went on forever, you'd get fed up. The same old songs, the same old music, again, 24-7. When the concert finishes, then everyone gets up and they chant, encore, encore, and the band carries on for a few more minutes, but then the band has to stop. And you, the listener, the audience, go one way, and the band goes another way. And you never cry after great concerts. You only feel this wonderful gratitude. What a wonderful time we had together. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have missed that for the world. I'm so blessed to have known the people which you love. And of course, you know that everything must pass. Mm -hmm. People do leave. And then they get new people coming into your lives. And then they leave. And you leave their lives. This is you know, the nature of our world. It's called Anicca. Things pass. So we accept these. Great. And when we accept the world, then we can actually enjoy the world. Mm. When we fight the world, we have what's called suffering. And suffering is asking from the world something it can't give you. Yeah. Good. Okay, do you think this provides a chance to stop and review where we've come to as a global society? Oh, yes, we always have chances to reflect, and the only time we can reflect is when we stop. So a lot of times the usual rushing around, running around, doing this and doing that has stopped for many people. And so if we can really stop and just contemplate and just see the beautiful trees, uh, growing outside your window, see the buds coming up, seeing the little animals coming out from their hibernation. That gives us a lot of joy and happiness. And that's actually why we need to stop to be able to see that. Otherwise, that sometimes people are just running always off to the next thing. Just like I keep on saying, every time I've been to London, it's very, very rare for me to see a human being in a great city like London. All I ever see is human goings and human doings and human thinkings, but very few people actually being there and just enjoying just the, the drizzle or the, the moon or the, uh, the sounds or just what's actually happening there. Too many people are off in the future thinking that sometimes if they work hard, if they plan well, then they get happiness sometime in the future. This actually starts to, to uh, put a pin to that balloon and it goes bust and then we can actually see the reality of our life. Mm -hmm. The happiness, you'd only find happiness right now. And even enlightenment, you'd only find right now. And so we make sure we stay in this moment, make the best of it. And that's the best preparation for the future. Now is where your future is being made. So we stop. And all these great, wonderful teachings have an opportunity to actually to come into our lives. And we can celebrate that. That's one of the reasons why that I mentioned earlier to someone, how Ajahn Chah would teach, whenever I complain about mosquitoes, he'd say, no, call them your teacher. He'd say, well, they hurt so much and they're just so dangerous. And he said, no, that's your teacher. That's where you learn. And so even the coronavirus... You can even say that that's your teacher. It teaches us something that all of what we plan, we have to let go of. Mm. Everything which we attach to, we sometimes just have to put aside because we are not in control of nature. Nature is in control of us. Mm. Good. So what are some of the positives that you think could come out of this situation? For example, are there some ways we could learn to move forward with greater social conscience and kindness for each other? Yeah, one of the things is not to be such control freaks. Because <laughs> it teaches us. And we always think, oh, it should be like this, it should be like that. We're going to control this, we're going to control that. And we find out that just our life is out of control. Mm. And just you make the best of it. And we ask for less, and we enjoy smaller things. There's so much joy and happiness, just you know, outside the window, just in the parks, just in the sky, in the rivers. And sometimes we can only just notice those. Then what's the big problem of life? It's because we're always looking where happiness isn't. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, so how could we make the best use, do you think, of this opportunity that we have now for more solitude? <laughs> well, I was going to say get coronavirus and then you've got no choice. <laughs> you have to be solitude. <laughs> but it's actually just no matter what happens in life, doesn't matter how sick you get, doesn't matter just how much it hurts, you can always smile. And that's why the Buddha said there's two parts of you know, pain and suffering. Is the physical and the emotional part. The physical is like the two thorns, which he said to uh, to Nakula, Martin Nakula Peter, that the physical you can't do much about, the mental you've got full power over. So it gives you the opportunity to put things in perspective. It's just the world of the body, it gets old age, sickness and death. And who said that? <laughs> Obviously the Buddha did, that's part of our teaching. Old age, sickness and death. And when we're going to die, we can't control that. Young or old, sickness, we're always going to get sick. And I often say to people that you cannot say there's something wrong with me, doctor, I'm sick. You have to say there's something right with me, doctor, I'm sick again. Which means that sickness is part of life and there's nothing evil about it. It's part of life. And if we have a, a much better attitude towards those things, we would suffer much less. Mm. Okay. Um, many people are concerned, Ajahn, for the well-being of the monastics in Perth and also worldwide at this time. Um, what are some of the measures in place for protection and how can people best continue to support monastics and monasteries? It's actually find out which monastics really need some help. The monks and nuns in Perth are doing really, really well. I was just um, asked by one of our Anagarikas, please let people know that we've got an oversupply of things again. <laughs> so people are very kind, which is wonderful that people are kind. But there are some monastics who are living by themselves who don't have that much support and who don't even have people giving them food and who just still work so hard setting things up for others. So they're the ones who really need to have some support. So I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Ajahn, um, yeah, um, a venerable Ajahn Chanda. So in other words, you need support. Over in Perth, we're doing fine, having a wonderful time. Mm. And could you reassure people that you have things in place to protect the monastics generally from um, the coronavirus? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Not we only have the, the Buddha Dhamma and the Sangha Not to protect us. <laughs> in other words, the attitude of mind <laughs> is most important. I mentioned this when I was chatting to you earlier, that I still recall very clearly when I was doing my teaching degree at Durham University, or as they say up that part of the world, Durham <laughs> University. And I had to just not go into the university one day because I had a terrible cold. It was probably close to the flu. I was in bed, stuff coming out of my nose, coughing, eyes all watery, feeling very weak. And, and then a doorbell rang and I had to, so no one else in that house, they kept on ringing and ringing, so I had to get up and answer it in my pyjamas, and it was somebody who was bringing my uh, music system. It was like the old hi-fi. This was in 1973 or something, 1972, 73. And so I was so excited. I signed for it, still in my pyjamas and still stuff coming out of my nose and my mouth. Signed for it, took it back up to my room, assembled it, and put the first record on, and I noticed something very strange. All the symptoms of my cold had totally disappeared and I never came back again. Of course, the music was uh, Jimi Hendrix. If everyone likes Jimi Hendrix, it's got a very great therapeutic, therapeutic value. <laughs> the most, most important thing was I was just enjoying myself, having some fun. And that joy and that fun, that happiness had a huge effect on me. Mm. And it has ever since. Every time you get sick, just cheer people up. Don't talk about the sickness. Talk about something which is more uh, enlightening, a bit more inspiring. When you do things like that, then people tend to get much better. If you focus on sickness all the time, of course, it's very hard not to when you are sick, but you can still focus on other things. And you find that when you focus on happiness, 
that does something to your body and it just really weakens the sickness. Mm -hmm. It's another case of watering flowers or watering weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people are just watering coronavirus far too much. <laughs> Okay. And um, yesterday we saw Ajahn Brumali on the um, YouTube channel, so this was really nice to see that the live stream talks are still happening in Perth. And um, just to reassure people as well that there isn't an audience there, but the talks are still happening. So are you also going to continue giving those talks, Ajahn? Well, if I'm still alive in a couple of weeks' time, yes. <laughs> My plan is still to be alive in two weeks' time. So next week will be um, Ajahn Nisarana, and then I'm week after that. Of course we do that. We've got all the equipment there. So mm. let's make use of it and give a nice talk. It's always a bit weird talking to a camera in an empty room. But, you know, we just look upon that empty room. There's all the heavenly beings, the devas and everyone else there. So, and you can imagine all the people on the other side of that camera tuning in and listening. So, of course, you can do that, and we will do that. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today, and, uh, yeah, we'll leave it here. Thank you. Take care, Ed. Excellent. I certainly will. <laughs>